For four years, it was part football, part carnival. And at times, part travelogue. But in the end, the ill-fated All-American Conference was better at staging circuses than competitive football games. The Cleveland Browns were the jewel that would be plucked from the wreckage by the rival NFL. But though the Browns completely dominated their conference year after year, their minor league status afforded them little respect in the eyes of the big boys of the NFL. In 1950, the Philadelphia Eagles were at the vanguard of NFL superiority. They were hailed as the titans of pro football, having won back-to-back -back world championships in 48 and 49. Any challenge to that was scoffed at by the football world. Nonetheless, when Paul Brown signed his team into the NFL in 1950, the stage was set for the inevitable showdown between the two powers. In effect, the very first Super Bowl. The battle lines were drawn. Well, it had been several years uh, that we were in the All-America Conference, and the uh, National League people would say uh, we didn't even have a football, all that kind of stuff that they made a lot out of nothing. And we were really up in the bit for the game. I believe this was the highest, uh, most dedicated football one-game experience I had ever seen a team in. But the laid-back Eagles, convinced of their invincibility, viewed the upstart challengers with a jaundiced eye. You know, if you could feel cocky before a game, we, we felt cocky. This was a team from a, what we thought was maybe a bush league. Uh, but... They weren't. Eagles coach Greasy Neal fed this overconfidence, maintaining the popular view that the Browns were nothing more than Bush League bullies. Greasy Neal thought the Cleveland Browns were not as good as they really were. We didn't scout them. He thought Paul Brown was a high school coach. They got some team from the uh, All-America Conference, and we didn't have to do much to beat them. For Eagle quarterback Tommy Thompson, Neal's miscalculation was uncharacteristic. I played for Greaser for quite a few years. He made very, very few mistakes. But I, uh, I think Neal made a mistake on, on, this, uh, on scouting this ball club. The prevailing mood that doubted the Browns was ultimately used to their advantage. The psychological preparation of a team was something Paul Brown strongly believed in. When he came across some negative articles about his team, he pioneered bulletin board psychology. I really think that was our motivation when we got to Philadelphia. Reading this paper for two weeks, newspaper, we just was ready to hit anything that, that the Eagles had. Ironic as it may seem, Pro Football's World Series takes place the first week of the 1950 season as the Cleveland Browns, champions of the All-American Conference, take on the defending kingpins of the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles. 85,000 fans get the thrill in the opening period as Cleveland's Don Phelps has long gone on a 70-yard scamper to the end zone. The opening minute set the tone for a game in which the Browns, in a word, overwhelmed the complacent and unprepared Eagles. The vaunted Eagle defense proved no match for the Browns' aggressive passing game. Cleveland attacked with such lightning efficiency that its effect on the Eagles was akin to shell shock. The Browns rendered the Eagles into a trance-like state as ball carriers bounced off of day's tacklers for big gains. In perhaps the greatest team debut in sports history, the Browns' route of the world champions stunningly demonstrated they were not only worthy of the NFL, but they would be a giant of the league for years to come. Not bad for a Bush League team with a high school coach. This was a great football team, and Paul Brown will go down in history as one of the great all-time NFL coaches. And the Cleveland Browns were for real, and we found this out.